Hello and welcome to ihnani.com. jQuery for Beginners. Level 1. Video 3. This is the third video of the series, and if you have not gone through our previous videos, I recommend you to complete them, before proceeding with this one. Since we will be continuing with the demo that we started in our previous tutorial, let us recap what we did. In our previous video, we looked into where and how to download the jQuery library, and we also downloaded it. We created a simple demo page, with a link and a text message, and wrote our first function in jQuery. We wrote a simple function in jQuery, and handled the click event from jQuery to execute it. Animated the page by toggling the message on and off, upon clicking the link in the page. Used some jQuery functions. We first used the fadeout function, then passed a time parameter to it. Then replaced fadeout with fade toggle function. In this video, let us get into the details of what we did in our previous video. First, I will explain on adding jQuery using a CDN hosted library. Then, we shall move on to looking at a better approach, of adding the script into our files to make it load faster. We'll also explain, why do we need to start executing jQuery only after the DOM, is loaded. We'll explain, ready, and, window.load, functions provided by jQuery library. In the previous video, the first thing that we did was to add a jQuery library to our project. I recommended downloading a copy of jQuery library to your local computer, in case of work related to development and testing. Since it's available locally, it's faster, and it does not require the internet to be available continuously. Since I used the word, recommend, you might be thinking. Whether is there any other different approach than what we followed in downloading and referencing the jQuery library? Does it mean that you can do away with all the downloading of jQuery library and adding it into the project? Don't we need to reference the jQuery library? You are partially correct and partially incorrect. Yes, we can do away with the option of downloading the jQuery library and adding it into the project. But still, we need to reference it in our page. Before you can get any further questions in your mind, let me explain it. There are, two, approaches to include jQuery library into your page. Local File Solution Method We used this approach in our previous video, wherein we downloaded the jQuery library into our machine, then included it into the project. And then using the script tag, we referenced it into our page. This is the approach I recommend for development. The reason, I will explain later on. CDN Hosted Solutions Method We can use CDN, from Google, Microsoft, and a host of other networks. CDN, short for Content Delivery Network, is a hosted solution, provided by companies with large networks, such as Google, Microsoft, Akamai, and others. In this video let us look at using the Google hosted version. Once you are familiar, there won't be much of a difference in using, any, CDN version you like. Many websites, opt for free CDN hosted solutions since they have proven to be reliable, load faster and also free up your bandwidth. With content delivery networks we have the benefit of a larger, high-speed network, which serves us the jQuery library from many locations. When a user, brings up your site in their browser, their location, triggers the server, that is closest to them geographically, to deliver the jQuery library and thereby decreasing the load time. For this approach, 
All we need to do, is reference the URL of the hosted jQuery library, into our page. The CDN approach is what I recommend in case of production environments. Let us look at using the CDN hosted library into the web page that we created in our previous video. This is the script tag that we use to reference the jQuery library into our page. If you look at the script tag here, the source attribute refers to the locally downloaded jQuery file. Since we will be using the Google hosted jQuery library, let us browse the site and get the URL for the Google hosted jQuery file. Open up your browser. You can find the Google hosted libraries at http colon double slash code dot google dot com slash apis slash libraries slash dev guide dot html as you can see the page says google code and google libraries api in this page you can find all the google hosted libraries the table of contents shows all the libraries available we are looking for the jQuery library, which is here. Click on the link, and it will take us to the section of the page, where we have the details, about the latest jQuery library, that is hosted at Google CDN. This line tells us the version of the file that is latest. While the link next to it takes us to the previous versions that are hosted, if we require them. This line tells about the additional details related to the library. This is the link that we need to use, if we need to reference a compressed library. The min.js tells us that it is the compressed version. While this link is for the uncompressed version. In order to reference the Google hosted library in your page, just replace the local file details in the source attribute with the one from the site. Copy the link from the Google website, for either the uncompressed or compressed version of the library, and replace the existing value in the source attribute of the script tag. And that is all is required. You now have the code ready, which now references the jQuery library hosted by Google. Once you are done with the changes, Save the file and let us go back and test it. Now let us browse the page. Since now we are referring to the library directly from Google Network, for our page to execute properly, we need to have the internet connection. Here you can see that there is no change in the appearance of the page, and if you go and click on the Click Me link, it's disappearing and appearing as it used to when we used the local jQuery file reference. Advantages of CDN hosted approach Especially Google and Microsoft, both are large companies with huge market penetration. Lot of websites already are using their hosted jQuery libraries. As the number of websites using these CDNs increase, the chance that you would have already grabbed that file from another website is high. So the library from these CDNs might have already been cached in your browser. Which means, when the user loads our page, the browser uses a cached version. Unless when requesting the library, if Google sends a modified version, wherein, the latest jQuery library would be downloaded, and used from the Google network instead of the file from your browser's cache. If the browser has the latest version in its cache, then there is no need to download the file, and that means faster page processing. This is the method that I recommend for production environments. In case of development environment, it becomes a disadvantage, since every time we test the page, the library has to be downloaded, from the content delivery network and this needs an active internet connection while developing. I hope you now know why I recommended the local version for development. Download once and then no need of internet connection while developing. If you have any questions or need more information on a part of this video, 
please use the forum at ignani.com. We will be happy to help you. You can find a lot of free video tutorials, training materials, how to videos, and much, much more at our site www.ignani.com. Check out the forum topic related to this tutorial on the site for all.